Hello everybody, welcome back for some more Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. I about said Drake's fortune for a second there. And now we're going to head back up into this little sewage area and basically break into the museum for realsies this time. Yeah, no, that's no glory for real. Alright, we're in now. We're good. What it looks like to me. Okay, so yeah, that wasn't really much of a cutscene. Sorry about that. I, I thought it would have been, but it's not. Here's our first treasure of, the, of chapter two. If it'll actually show up on my damn thing. Yeah, sometimes the treasure does take a lot. Uh, does take a while to show up. This is the Benzatine gold coin. I'm not gonna show. I'm not gonna like inspect them. I, I think I inspected them last time I played Uncharted, which was a while back. Yeah, like when I played Uncharted One, I think I did like inspections, but I'm probably not gonna do it this time. I, I love the lighting effect, but when it, you know, the the flashlight moves with the camera, and it's very odd. I mean, it makes sense, but I wish like you know, Drake would at least move the flashlight towards where the camera is gonna be pointing towards. But then again, they probably thought that would be too much work, or maybe that would just possibly be. Too much of a big problem because it would make it look more unrealistic, but then again, this is kind of unrealistic too. Here's our second treasure. There are ten here. Remember that. There are ten treasures in this chapter. This is the glass eye, uh, glass evil eye. Yeah, it looks like the same thing from both sides. Sometimes I'll look, sometimes I won't. It depends on the day, I guess. <laughs> well, we're not going this way. Yeah, good point. One thing about this game, though, and just about Uncharted in general, you know, they always, if you go somewhere you're not supposed to go, or if you go somewhere before you're supposed to go there, or just, it, it's a linear game, but if you, you know, before you go somewhere, you know, that, like, and, like, if, what well, that steam thing, like, I wasn't supposed to go across until I did the pipe thing, right? If I didn't walk up near Flynn, he probably wouldn't have said, you know, we can't go this way unless we want to keep our skin. Or something like that. They usually would do that. Or it's like, you kind of need to pay attention to your surroundings, I guess, and just see where everybody's at. And there's no real, like, talking to everybody kind of deal, but it's always nice to hear what people have to say about every situation, and it's kind of nice to, to have that feeling in this game. Oh, crap. Okay. Now there should be a door just around this corner. That's our access point. Once we're through, just stick to the plan. You got me? I thought I saw a glimmer there for a second. I guess I probably didn't. I don't know. There's really nothing down there. We've been down there already, so... Don't have to worry about that. Now, once we're in here... I remember this one specifically. I'm gonna come around here, and there's a treasure right here. This reminds me of Silent Hill 3, that little room with the, the mannequins, and then you walk away, and then all of a sudden, one of them, you go back and hear, like, a scream. Auto Man Ring! Yeah, you hear like a scream and then you turn around and it's like one of their heads are gone and it's bloody and stuff. Silent Hill 3 is awesome, but it's not as scary as Silent Hill 2 in my opinion. Okay, I'm, I'm obviously being dumb right now. I I kind of... Yeah, it's been a little too long since I've done this. It's locked. Good job I came prepared. <laughs> I pick more than my nose, my friend. Wait! There's an alarm. Oh, that's new since last time. Ah, great. Now what? Well, I can disarm it if we can find the junction box. Yeah, like I said, this game is, uh... It's really linear on where you need to go. But, you know, it's pretty explorative in most cases. Not all, but most. So now we're gonna disarm the alarm, of course. And, yeah. I'm going to be playing this as recklessly as possible because that's just how I like to play. Shit. I got him. Okay. So now I can exit through the corners and do uh, stealth attacks from behind. I was going to do triangle for a second there. I think I'm playing Batman. No, I have not gotten Batman Arkham Knight yet. I plan on getting it sometime, but. Maybe sometime later this year, not right now. I'm just gonna wait for the DLC to pop its head. There's the tower. Yeah, but we can only get to it from the roof, and we can't get to the roof from here. We're gonna have to make our way to the next courtyard, through that gate over there. Well, let's do it. Okay. 
hop down here and go ahead and take cover. And of course, like they said, you know, you can perform corner transitions now. They got a lot of different things they can do in this game rather than Uncharted 1. This one feels better than Uncharted 1. You know, it's less stiff, you know, a little bit more fluid and stuff like that. And just in general, in my opinion, just a better game. But, I, you know, I kind of liked the beat em up style of the first one a little bit. Uh, crap. My, uh, again, I'm drawing a blank on where some treasure might be. Be, be, be. I don't think there was any treasure in here, though. Like I said, again, if I miss any, I'll just make a video of me going back and get them at the end of the game. No real biggie. And you guys can do it, too. Like, if I miss it and you guys are, you know, watching this video along with me. Alright, so now we're going to take out both of them. And now we're going to do melee. This is different than the first one. Now you don't, you can't do, like, some kind of... I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to say linear. You can't do some kind of basic combo anymore. You just... It's more of a cinematic kind of appeal to it. This game's trying to go for that, too. More of a cinematic appeal. Rather than just um, a straight-up, just, you know, pure game. Which is still... It's still a game, but, you know... It dwells on the fact of being... Kind of almost like a... Trying to be like almost like a movie. I think uh, Flynn went down here. Yeah, he did. Alright. So what are we waiting for? Alright, Flynn. If I get caught, oh well. Again, it's been a while since I've done this. I don't really play stealth games. I, I, I got, like, no real problem with stealth games, but I just don't like them enough. So we got, there's a silent takedown right there. Oh, crap. Flynn, damn it. Crap. Yeah, sometimes when, like, I think I was supposed to go up and take out that guy instead. But I was just being dumb and not paying attention. Yeah. I was just being a dumbass. I got kind of a little greedy. And there we go. Put him in a chokehold and knock his ass out. Come on, dude. Come on. Shh. Gotta be quiet. I mean, I, I, I don't mind stealth games, like I said. I just don't like them. You know? They're, they're not my cup of tea. I mean, if a game has stealth in it, then I'm fine with doing that. But I don't really care much for, you know, pure stealth. Like, I can play probably like Metal Gear Solid just fine, but something like Ghost Recon where it just lacks, in my opinion, anything really for like innovation or just a lot of stuff. Just, I don't know, when I played Ghost Recon Future Soldier, I, I just didn't like it. Most people like it, but I just I can't I can't seem to get into it. Silver amulet box. But again, I never really played a Ghost Recon before. I played Future Soldier. That was my first one. That was kind of on me. But you know that game kind of brings back some good memories and some bad memories too. Bad memories as in just personal things, but then you know good memories as in like multiplayer was fun. You know, once in a while. should be able to lift this up, sneak right under. Whoa! Whoa! Not so fast. There's another alarm. Ah, oh, great. You want to get this one? Wait here. Oh, I, I love the look on uh, Flint's face. He's like, are you kidding me? I'm not going to go get that. What the hell with that crap? Okay, so now we got to climb back up again. And, you know, of course we got to climb. It's, it's more of like a running joke in Uncharted. Wait till we get to three where they're like, who's got to go up there? And Drake's like, I'll do it. It's, you know, it's kind of, you know, silly. Kind of sucks for Drake that he's got to do everything, but... Hold on. I know we're supposed to lift the gate, but I want to see something real quick. What? I mean, can this even go anywhere? Apparently, no. I keep forgetting what I'm supposed to be doing. Alright. One, two, three. <laughs> Yeah. Hurry. Okay, okay. Okay. Hurry up. Easy. Easy. Now, 
one thing for sure, I just want to get this out right now. If you've got a PlayStation 3, you owe it to yourself to get this game. To get this franchise. It, to be honest, okay, Uncharted 3 has a much better, uh, just in general, like, multiplayer. You know, the campaign's pretty good, but this one is just by far one of the best PlayStation 3 games you can get. Alright, so, and, and you know, Uncharted 1's pretty good, too, but it's not as good as this game. This game is just perfect in all ways. So for belt buckle, that's the next one we got. You know, there's plenty of trophies. You can always restart your game, and you can basically get trophies again. Not like real trophies, but you know, you can get like in-game medals and stuff. Again, you can like unlock the skins again if you wanted to. So that's something I really like about Uncharted 2 and 1 is they had like an collectible kind of deal, but Uncharted 3 got rid of all that. And I was kind of sad that Uncharted 3 didn't have. You know all the stuff that the, the the previous Uncharted's basically did, which was make it a you know make it a game, basically, <laughs> or make it more of like a Naughty Dog styled game. I mean, Uncharted Three is great. You know, there's nothing. I don't really have really much to complain about it. Now we just gotta find a way besides the fact of its decrease, and you know what the what they offered you in the game, I guess you could say. But I will be getting a, I will be getting to Uncharted Three in the future. And when Uncharted 4 comes out, I'm not going to be doing it right away. I'm probably just going to wait. I'm going to wait until I get done with Uncharted 3. And then I'll just do Uncharted 4 when I get the chance. So, you know, don't expect me just to jump on Uncharted 4. I'm not like that. I'm not here for views. I'm just here for fun and entertainment and trying to provide you guys a... Hopefully a decent um, experience for Uncharted 2 to see kind of how... To see kind of how and why I like this game a lot. And why this is my personal favorite. Now, I did say that Crash 2, Jack 2, and Uncharted 2 are my favorite of the Night Dogs. I kind of find that funny that it's always the second one that's my favorite. This one I can stand by. Crash 2, I can stand by, but I play Crash 1 more than I do Crash 2. Just, I think Crash 2 is amazing. It's just that Crash 1, just for me, is basic, and I kind of like that. Kind of with, uh, with Uncharted 1. I'll usually play that more than I play this. Just because it's basic, and I kind of like that. Now what? It's time to tip the odds back in our favor. Oh, that's brilliant. Guns? What are you thinking? Relax, Gandhi. They're tranquilizer guns, totally non-lethal. Your conscience will remain unscathed. Oh, well, good idea. Great. OK, a little bit of advice. These things have lousy range, so we still have to get in close. You OK with that? Know how to shoot a gun, genius. Okay, so we're gonna be taking out one or the other. I'm gonna take out the guy on the left, and Flynn's gonna pretty much take out the guy on the right. I recommend aiming for the head, that way it just makes this a lot easier for yourself. Now, again, like you said, it has lousy range, so make sure you get in a little bit closer. And for me, I'm gonna get as close as I possibly can. So just aim in, aim for the head, bam. Flynn should get the other one. If Flynn misses, you have a chance to shoot the other guy. But he'll usually end up shooting him anyway, so... Again, like you said, they're totally non-lethal. They're not going to kill anybody. One thing I like about Uncharted is just... Just the treasure... You know what I kind of want to see in Uncharted 4? I want to see them bring back treasures, which I'm sure they might do. But if they do it, can you bring back, like, treasures to where there's just, like... A couple hundred or so, not just a hundred. I mean, it's traditional to have like a hundred and one or so. I get that. Or just, you know, in general, it's a hundred or so. But can we just have like a whole bunch of just like, kind of like Tomb Raider did? You know, where you find like crypts and stuff like, or like tombs basically, and you just follow those and stuff like that. I don't know, that's just my personal thought of what I would like to see in a chart of war. Just more treasure hunting. You know, or just getting something out of finding treasure. You know, you don't have to really get anything. Just, just allow us more treasure to find. You know, more little artifacts because they're always cool to kind of look on, or or to look at, I guess you could say. So there we go. We take out that guy. Of course, you can reload every tranquilizer shot. The cool thing about Uncharted One and, and Two is whenever you unlock medals, you get points, but you can use those points to buy skins and buy like little cheats and extras. 
So for trophies that require you to use a gun, like MP40, when you have to get like a hundred or so kills with the MP40 later on in the game, you only get the you only get the MP40 like once in the entire game. You can use a cheat to unlock the MP40 and just equip it whenever you feel like it. And of course, you can get like infinite ammo and stuff like that. So it's still a game, and I really like that. And I kind of wish Uncharted 3 would have done that, but they didn't. Ivory Chest Knight. Those look pretty cool. It reminds me of a. Well, I know Alice Madness Returns came after this game, I think it was. But it reminds me of Alice's, um, that horse hammer weapon thing. That was pretty kick ass, though. I mean, I, I did prefer the Vorpal Blade. I mean, who doesn't want to use that thing? But Alice Madness Returns was pretty fun. I never played the first one, though, but. All right, there's the tower. Getting closer. Appreciate that update, Captain Obvious. I can definitely say, from the looks of it, it looks pretty fun, but, you know, I, I kind of like uh, Madness a little bit more, in my opinion, because it's more of like a hack and slash towards me. Not towards me, but just a hack and slash just in general. All right, so we're going to hop on that, and if I'm correct, there should be a treasure around here somewhere. There's a treasure that you have to look up to and shoot, and that's what I'm going to be looking for. And hopefully I don't miss it either, because if I miss it, that's going to suck. I think it's actually... It's a place where you drop down to, I know that much. And I don't think we drop down to this one. Oh! I'm slipping, I'm slipping! Like I said, I'm trying to make this as much of an experience as possible, so I'm not going to try to shut up during these. But most of these cutscenes, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, shut up in and just let you guys kind of, you know, listen in and stuff like that, and let you guys pay attention. Oh crap! What was it? Um, there should be like another place we go to that looks kind of like this, but I don't exactly remember where it was. Hopefully, it's not out here. No, I think it's like after this part. I believe so. There's treasure down there too. I know that. Or down there, my bad. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So now we gotta climb the rope. And of course, more swinging on the ropes. But it's better than Charter One because now it actually works better. In my opinion, it does. I think it's a. Uh... Okay, maybe not this one. One of these things you gotta kind of land on, I think. I, I'm a little. I'm getting a little bit afraid to kind of. No, I think you climb on the other side. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's another side, and that's where you drop down to. Yeah, I believe so. There it is, right here. All right, next one. This is uh, 12 out of 100. Automon bracelet. This is our 12 out of 15. We got three more to go in this chapter. The next chapter has four. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep reminding you guys how many they have, just so you can kind of. I can give you guys kind of an idea of how many to look for, because looking in this game is not as secretive as it was back in, like, Uncharted 1. But it's they definitely hide them pretty well. Again, not like Uncharted 1 hiding, where it's just, like, completely obligatory. Or Last of Us, for God's sakes. Oh, my goodness. They had some of those firefight pendants, like, wherever they felt. Like, speaking of Last of Us, I want to play that again. I'm actually, uh, for hardcore and guys, I was going to do God of War, but... I don't have God of War. God, I, oh God of War. I, of course, I have God of War. I don't have a God mode unlocked. So, yeah, apparently I didn't. So now I gotta go play through the whole game just to get a God mode unlocked. And now I'm just. I said, you know what? I'll just play. Uh, I'll just play Last of Us. I'll just play. You know. Um, survivor mode or whatever. Survival. I think it's Survivor. Yeah, Survivor, not Survival. What the hell am I talking about? Yeah, so around here somewhere, that's where it's at. There's going to be a little edge. Okay, I think we come around this corner. And we come around here. Uh, piss. <laughs> there it is, right there. There, there it is. See, I'm not going to let you guys down. I'm not trying to let you guys down. I'm trying to help you guys out as best as I can. Help anybody or just, you know, try to be entertaining as much as possible. Antique pocket watch. Cha-ching. That's two more left to go. As you can tell, when I was playing Jack 2... I, I did, totally did not sound like I was having very much fun, but when I'm playing this game, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but I'm pretty damn enthused about this. I just can't help it. I, I love this game. There's... Again, like I said, aim for the head. As you've seen last time, I did knock that guy out, but I know where the other two are. 
We can't get any closer with the tower lit up like that. What the hell's she doing? Come on, Chloe. <laughs> That's... Okay, I know that was abrupt, but... I meant, uh, I know where the other two treasures are. I, I should have explained that before the cutscene happened, but I didn't. Okay, so now we're going to let Flynn do his little business here. Uh, you know, just watch him do it. Watch him work it. I, yeah, I do know where the other two are, so we're, we're, we're still good on treasure. All right. Okay. And then I'll beat this chapter and end off the episode so that I can go look at more treasures and find out where those are in. I'm probably going to end up recording, like, all damn day. Ladies first. Ah, <laughs> cute. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Yeah, and there's the acoustic alarm. Until we get this case unlocked, that thing's gonna go off if we so much as touch this glass. No worries, mate. <laughs> All right. Now we're sure it's the right one. I guess there's only one way to find out. Sorry, Marco. Statement of the year. This is it. It's bloody useless. The light of the great Khan. Wait a minute. What are you doing? It's resin. It'll burn. And? Just give me your lighter. What? Is that really a good idea in here? And? Let me see that. Our ships were driven by a great flood tide into the wilds of Java. Sounds like they were hit by a tsunami. Yeah, somewhere off the west coast of Borneo. Oh, great. That narrows it down a bit. Uh, look, this mountain must have been the closest landmark where they went aground. We find that mountain. We find the ships. Yeah, good work, mate. Uh, wait, wait, there's more. Okay, Joe. As if the ocean itself sought to throw off the terrible cargo we carried from Shem... Bala. The curse of the Chintamani. Would that mean something to you? Shambhala? Oh my god, Flynn. What? Marco Polo found Shambhala. Shangri-La. You're joking. If they were carrying the Chintamani stone, it might still be there. It's all very fascinating, but we really gotta go. Yeah, I'm right behind you. What the hell are you doing? Sorry, mate. This is where we part ways. Wait, Flynn, we had a plan. No, you had a plan. Turns out I've got one of my own. Uh, come on, throw me the rope. Don't be stupid. Oh, yeah, right. You're the mastermind. Only you overlooked one little detail. Didn't you, partner? So what are you going to do, shoot me now? No, I just need you out of the way for a little while. <laughs> You think I didn't know about the ships from the beginning? Any schoolboy could have figured that out. Flynn, listen. Face it, genius. You've been played. <laughs> uh -uh, not yet. I want to give the guards a decent head start. Right, that's my cue. No hard feelings, yeah? Okay, I know this is a bad idea, but I'm going to end up this episode here, because we're at my 25 minute mark, and I know it's going to be kind of a rough little, you know, cliffhanger deal, but this will be this, I guess. There's a treasure around here somewhere, uh, should be right about here, there it is. So I'm going to pick this up for you guys, just kind of end it off the video that way. We'll make it out of this in no time, Antique Pipe, but there's more cutscenes to come, and there's more stuff to kind of run away from, so hopefully if I get a chance to kind of avoid all the lasers, I'll, yeah, all right, I will pretty much see you guys in the next episode, so take care.
Oh, I dropped my remote. Take care, everybody.